Hi, welcome back. I want to hopefully run you through a very short and simple video. I realized I hadn't talked a lot about um, base troubleshooting or base perfection style videos. I know a lot of you all really enjoy the tip style, the really quick, um, just ways that I troubleshoot makeup basically. So I was doing my makeup the other day and I realized I hadn't talked about the two very specific ways I will do my base for two totally different reasons. And I thought, okay, these two ways can really benefit those of you who like full coverage and also those of you who like minimal, more natural coverage. But basically, regardless, um, either way, these two things that I follow, these two things that I do, ensure that my makeup always stays balanced, meaning that it doesn't look overdone, but also not underdone, if that makes sense. So just that happy medium. So I'm gonna go through two really important um, techniques, methods, whatever you wanna call it, that I take and that I do to um, keep, keep the balance going strong. So I've got a couple little demos and I'm just gonna run you through as uh, briefly and as swiftly as I can. So this is kind of what I like to call a coverage balance method and I 10 out of 10 made that up, but it's, it's what it is. This is where I will choose one of two application methods. The first being full coverage foundation with no concealer, or secondly, a sheer to light coverage foundation with a bit of concealer. And there's two totally different reasons why I will go for one over the other, and also two totally different reasons why one might work for you better than the other. So when I opt for the full coverage foundation and skipping on concealer, I'm telling myself that day, number one, hey, I want a little bit of a quicker application. And number two, I just want my skin to look really nice and smooth. I'm not necessarily looking for a ton of dimension all over my face. I really just want that healthy, uh, look, but uh, my skin could be having a flare up that day with more redness than usual. That's generally when I will opt for that method. And so I think this method is really good for those of you who have rosacea or redness in the skin, uh, mild to moderate texture. You probably don't get a ton of breakouts and just overall you're looking for a quick smooth canvas. The reason that I love this method over going and applying a corrector and concealer is not only because it is quicker, but when you, I I talk about this so frequently on my channel, when you layer more product, the more product you layer on the skin, the more noticeable it's going to be by the end of the day. I will say I think it's very important that you find a fuller coverage foundation that does still have a nice skin-like finish to it. Um, so in my demo, I use the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. That's one of my favorite fuller coverage foundations. I think it has a nice finish. Um, I oftentimes don't even have to set it. Just with any, just like with anything in makeup, you'll have to do a trial and error process if you don't feel like you have that fuller coverage uh, base product in your collection already that gives you a nice skin-like finish. But overall, um, the reason I opt for this method is because it is quicker, but it still looks like I've done my makeup fully. So let's talk about sheer foundations with concealer. So that's the um, method that I took today, what I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing Charlotte Tilbury's Light Wonder with Charlotte Tilbury's uh, Magic Away Concealer. So this is basically, again, I'm bringing you back to the dimension. Obviously, when you're using a little bit of concealer, especially if you choose to use one that is slightly lighter, you're gonna get a little bit more dimension in the face. I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this. Basically, on days when I have a lot of texture, um, I've mentioned I have, I'm diagnosed with like three different types of dermatitis, and when I have a ton of texture going on, I want the rest, I want basically the sheerest amount of coverage as possible, but I also want to cover those areas 
that are problematic for me. So by using something that gives me a nice skin-like finish, I have a nice softly corrected base, then I'll go in with the concealer and do like a spot conceal situation. So if you're someone who does get breakouts, you get, you know, breakouts here and there. I think this method is really effective because you're choosing to go for something really light and fresh on the base. It's not overwhelming, but then you're going in secondary and you're getting rid of those areas that you find problematic. This also brings me back to my layering point. When you choose a base product that is more sheer in coverage and possibly has a higher water content to it, I find that those products sit really nicely on textured skin and those products tend to enhance the skin less. Um, so you're using something that is very thin, very sheer. You're not putting um, a, you know, a thicker layer on the skin to start out with. So in my opinion, it's okay to go in and layer something on top of that, um, if that makes sense. So both of these ways are very um, similar you're gonna get a similar finish regardless. So both of these methods that I take, very simple, very easy. What I'm trying to say at the end of the day is that you'll never see me using uh, a full coverage foundation with a full coverage concealer and then a full coverage powder on top. I like that variation between my products because I think at the end of the day, it really gives you this extra dimensional like 3d finish to the skin where the skin looks nice and soft and perfected but again not overdone okay so my second insurance policy for ensuring that my base is nice and balanced is basically a variation method that i'll do and the easiest way i can explain this is that oftentimes i'll see people especially who really um, might have more combination oily skin think that they have to do matte products products for everything, meaning matte foundation, matte concealer, matte powder, matte blush, matte bronzer. You get what I'm saying? And same thing goes for people who really enjoy like a nice glowy, dewy look. I used to be like, hey, you can never have too much glow. Now I'm like, I think you can just just a little bit so my quick fix to ensure that i just have a nice variation going on in the skin if i have opted for let's say a matte foundation um, maybe i've sat my skin a little bit more on the flat to matte side i will always top my cheeks with some type of cream or liquid product it adds dimension back into the skin again it adds this um, almost like realistic finish on top of something that has been flattened out. Um, not in a bad way, because we do love a nice soft flat matte look, especially if you're gonna have oils peeking through by the end of the day. And I get comments from people all the time saying, you know, my oils take care of it by the end of the day. Like my skin ends up looking super oily. If you're that type of person, disregard. You know your skin better than I do, but if you are someone that just finds that you lean on that super matte side, Try popping on something like um, the e.l.f. Multi Sticks that I talk about, uh, the NARS Multiples, the Daniel Sandler Watercolors, any type of cream, liquid, highlight, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. That's a beautiful um, liquid that you can just top your cheeks with and your skin looks so lovely and ethereal. Now, the same thing goes for those of you who really enjoy an overly dewy look, you like the glow, you like the dew, but you find by the end of the day, nothing staying on, maybe you look a little too dewy, really just very simple steps to take. I mean, personally, when I want an ultra glowy look, I only set the T-zone, but same thing. I might go for a bronzer that's a little bit more matte, let's say like a powder bronzer as opposed to a cream one, because that's gonna ultimately help me set the parameters of my face uh, without having to use like a translucent powder or a pressed powder. I just make those small variations in textures and and products to help ensure that I'm not one dimensional with every single one of my products. I'm not one dimensional and using all dewy and all cream. I'm not one dimensional and using all flat and all matte. So those are really the two techniques, methods, and I know some people are gonna be like, that was four. 
it was four categorized into two categories, okay? Anyways, these are just steps that I take to keep my makeup looking nice and balanced, regardless of if I want something more matte and regardless of if I want something more dewy, more sheer, more full coverage. It covers all of the spectrums. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions for me, leave them down below. I'm gonna have product suggestions, especially for um, the fuller coverage, but more skin-like foundations down below. Uh, let me know if you take any of these routes for your daily makeup routine. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.